the typical American housewife. During the 1950s and 60s, this was the dream of many American women. Happily devoting herself to her children and husband, the homemaker was considered the epitome of femininity. In reality, many women felt disenchanted with the homemaker lifestyle. Among them were the women of the Smith College class of 1942. At their 15th college reunion, one alumna created an anonymous questionnaire addressing the plight of the housewife. The results proved that while many women may have felt alone in their dissatisfaction, they were not. The alumnae were asked about their finances, marriages, children, etc., as well as questions they had not much considered, such as, If your main occupation is homemaker, do you find it totally fulfilling? What difficulties have you found in working out your role as a woman? The author of this questionnaire, a suburban housewife herself, was 36-year-old part-time journalist Betty Friedan. For five years following the Smith reunion in 1957, Friedan conducted extensive research on the state of American women through various interviews, psychological analyses, women's magazines, and more, in an attempt to address the overall shift of women's role in society back to the home since the 20s and 30s and especially since World War II. In February 1963, Friedan published her findings in book form. Her book would do more than just give a name to the shared discontent amongst American housewives. Betty Friedan's book, The Feminine Mystique, would jolt the United States into a new wave of feminism by exploring the various ways in which women were silenced by a male-dominated society, encountering the confined and largely unquestioned role of middle-class American women, and encouraging women to exchange this role for one that was truly equal to men's. Friedan would not likely have been able to write or publish The Feminine Mystique at all if not for the work earlier American feminists had done to further women's rights. She acknowledges these women in The Feminine Mystique as a way of thanking them and illustrating what women are capable of. For increasing women's educational opportunities, Friedan recognized Mary Lyon, who founded the first women's college in 1837, Mount Holyoke Female Seminary, now Mount Holyoke College. This will be an era in female education, Lyon predicted. The work will not stop with this institution. Friedan also wrote her appreciation of the women who fought for women's suffrage, such as the organizers of the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott, as well as Mount Holyoke graduate Lucy Stone, who is often credited as the first woman to assemble a national women's rights convention. Unfortunately, the gains these women made were largely overshadowed in the 60s by the happenings of the time, such as John F. Kennedy's election, the Vietnam War, and the Cold War. And before the fight for gender equality following publication of The Feminine Mystique could begin at all, another fight for equality was already ensuing, the fight for racial equality. The civil rights movement was in full swing, marked by the rise of activist and Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. Despite the various changes occurring between 1957 and 1963, one issue remained relatively stagnant, the issue of women's rights. Gender inequality was evident in the home, workplace, politics, and media, Friedan argued. Socially, women were restricted to the household even if they had a college degree, as was the case with many of Friedan's fellow graduates at Smith. Not only was getting a job stigmatized and considered unfeminine, but women were paid 59 cents on the man's dollar and were kept out of top positions despite qualification. Yet despite the obvious injustice in American society, the feminine mystique was considered very controversial at the time of its release by men and women alike. Several letters to the editor of Life magazine expressed some harsh opinions on Friedan, saying, If most mothers followed her advice, divorce and juvenile delinquency would increase tremendously, and... How unusual of you to print such an article. By the time American women have been indoctrinated by Betty Friedan and Simone de Beauvoir, they're ready to commit mass suicide. Another article in Life magazine, which tells the story of perfect housewife Heloise, mocks Friedan by saying, Forget about Betty Friedan, whose name rings no bell with Heloise, and all the others who oppose the feminine mystique and its notion that a woman's place is in the home. Heloise's women do not yearn to be microbiologists, composers, or courtesans. They are vexed not so much by the Hanoi question as by what Heloise calls the crayon stain question. Aside from widespread criticism, Friedan also received much praise, including a letter from Suffer in New York that begins, Betty Friedan, I love you. You have just given me back myself, the most wonderful gift a person could receive. The impact the feminine mystique had on everyday Americans was evident in the mail Friedan received. 
ranging from eloquent poems to letters from 12-year-olds. Moreover, 1.4 million copies of the first paperback edition were sold, and it remained on the New York Times bestseller list for six weeks. Without the feminine mystique, many women, such as Janet Polk, wouldn't have discovered the second wave feminist movement at all. Uh, being frustrated at having had everything that I was supposed to have, a, a husband that I loved uh, very much, who was kind and thoughtful, and by that time three children, and uh, um, a nice place to live, uh, and the living happily ever after wasn't happening because it wasn't enough. So um, I began to be interested in the women's movement because as a cause of my uh, unrest uh, and reading books such as Betty Friedan's The Feminist Mystique. Friedan's inspiration of these women following the publication of The Feminine Mystique gained her nationwide fame that would help her become involved in the political battle for women's rights. She became the first president of the National Organization for Women, or NOW, in 1966 after a conference centered on demanding enforcement of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which would prevent sex-based job discrimination. Arguably one of NOW's greatest short-term successes was the Women's Strike for Equality on August 26, 1970. Since the release of The Feminine Mystique, enough women had joined the women's rights movement for 50,000 women to march in New York City in an effort to demonstrate the power of the movement. Groups of women across the country participated by encouraging others to stop cooking and cleaning for the day, an obvious nod to the confinement of women to household duties as discussed in The Feminine Mystique. Other organizations that Friedan helped found after The Feminine Mystique included the National Women's Political Caucus and the National Abortion Rights Action League. Friedan's support of the Equal Rights Amendment, and even the idea of equality itself, has permeated into our society today and made the idea of women deserving the same opportunities as men much more commonplace. The legacy Friedan left with the feminine mystique paved the way for legislation such as Title IX, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in any federally funded education program or activity and the Supreme Court case Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion. In my grandmother's lifetime, we did not have universal suffrage in this country. We've come a far, far away since that time. Mm -hmm. But when you consider um, just yes. the economics mm -hmm. and, uh, of, of being a female in, yeah. the, in this world, there's a far, far way to go. Mm -hmm. And if you look at um, pop culture, the media, um, we play into a lot of stereotypes that are very unhealthy. So, are men and women equal in the United States like Friedan wanted? Women do not enjoy equal rights today mm. in this country or in our state. Yeah. And the state of girls in Indiana is in distress mm -hmm. by a number of measures, and it couldn't be more important or urgent that we continue to work on these issues, but that everyone gets involved. I'm lonely here. I need more women working side by side. We need more um, women in positions of power. We need, need more women voting. Mm -hmm. Betty Friedan's The Feminine Mystique undoubtedly changed the way women are perceived in American society and the opportunities available to them because of this. By investigating the suppression of American women, confronting the narrow perspectives and unjust expectations for women, and encouraging the promotion of equality between men and women knowing that she would experience extreme backlash, Friedan transformed the women's movement. Although sexism and prejudice against women is still prevalent in the United States, the feminine mystique and the activism resulting from its publication provides a model for furthering the goal of equality. Friedan's model of activism via analysis, data, and interviews in an approachable format can be used to finish the hard work she began and truly achieve equality.